And we're back. Welcome back, everyone. Okay. Welcome to our friendly tech chat. We are excited to be here back from the Kotlin Dev Day, which we joined both with Bart, and that was quite a different experience than like in the recent year to be present offline on premises and do a presentation with the audience, uh, looking at you, giving you feedback, uh, well, yeah. talking to people, coming to you later, say, yeah, but I do something slightly differently than you. Have you thought about that? It's, yeah, it, it's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> just there is so much more more depth to a talk if you can immediately after it's done voice your 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 opinions your concerns your questions to people around you or to the speaker and then take that next step in in consideration and in uh, understanding by just engaging with other people it's uh, it, it's re for me personally. It really was the difference between something that uh, mostly drains energy and mostly gives a lot of energy. Yeah, that was uh, that was noticeable very well also by your talk. <laughs> that was very energetic. I really liked it. We already talked about. We even had I think a separate episode about uh, giving feedback on that. The previous version of this talk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, previous exactly. version. This one was definitely improved. Hopefully, partly by the feedback, but definitely <laughs> lots of energy was there and lots of yeah, it was quite yeah. smooth. I liked, I liked your talk. And and you asked me afterwards, like I'm, I'm curious if that energy reflects on the um, recording. And recordings are available, uh, well, right now since we're recording it. So we're going to be putting links in the description as well, and uh, so you can all check whether that works. <laughs> So there will be our sessions and also sessions of well, all the sessions. And actually, I liked yeah. quite a lot of them. What are what yeah. were your favorite takeaways there? My favorite session, I think for me, it was either uh, the one by uh, Urs Peter on Loom versus coroutines or uh, the one uh, from Nico Kreine on how architecture can help you um, migrate to Kotlin. So I, I really think the migration part was a side note, and just the, prop, the good architecture uh, was the the star of that presentation. Uh. <laughs> I also really like those two uh, presentations. There were other good presentations. There were some presentations we didn't attend because there were two tracks. I'm actually quite curious to take a look on some of them. But the Urs Peter and Nico, yeah, those were the most interesting for me. From Urs was really, I don't. Th I think it was very concise and very clear and for broad audience what's actually happening with the whole asynchronous non-blocking stuff in JVM and yes. Kotlin and how it works together, what to expect a very good, very good thing to watch. So I would really recommend to any of our listeners, watchers to check that out that you guys will not regret at all. And about the architecture from Nico, yeah, that that was indeed conceptually more about how to make small steps and how to apply yes, small exactly. steps to changes, how to build your systems, especially when they start to grow a little bit, because in small systems, in a very, very small system, well, you can always do any step relatively easily, just do it in one go and that's it. But when your system starts to grow, you have uh pieces that stop to fit fully in your head or fit into one week of refactoring then you want to be able to do gradual transitions and that was i think mostly what was to talk about how to build your systems that they are embracing change embracing gradual change yeah no and i think that's really important uh, to to set up a a code base for success in in the long run because uh uh like Quite often when you see people thinking about like, how do I uh, set this up for success in, in, in the future? And then they start introducing like premature generalizations and stuff like that. But keeping it simple and making it easy to change by doing the simplest thing and making sure that what it does is it does well. That uh, is a much more effective way of setting a code base for, for success. So we had... Um, uh, Ursus uh, talk that was uh, about uh, 
uh, the, the, a really interesting deep dive about uh, what Project Loom is doing versus uh, what uh, Kotman Color teams are doing and how they, uh, these can be migrated in, in the future. So I, I wholeheartedly uh, echo that sentiment that um, that's interesting for pretty much anyone. Um, and then uh, the Nico Kreine, which was like a really good uh, showcase of architecture that sets your code base up for success. One uh, aspect that I found interesting uh, during the day was uh, the different um, Arrow talks. There was the one by Thies, I think. Exploring Arrow, Thies, your Fun Defend. Right? Yes, functional programming in Kotlin. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so uh, he said he was uh, going to uh, make the case for, for Arrow. Did you, did you get the case? Yeah. I'm 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 still not convinced because that problem that um, Urs described in in a question like what happens if you need to uh, combine uh, monads um, that's exactly where I've seen it go horribly wrong as well and I I haven't seen a, a proper way around this. For me, it was interesting to watch this presentation in any case because it gives you the idea how this machinery of arrows. Um, either supposed to be used yes what they're aiming at because uh, i usually get some glimpse on different pieces and now it's getting a little bit clear but it, it was fun to watch this uh, this stuff it's interesting how it's structured but it was for me my per personal feeling that it's always like you're we're trying to build something that doesn't belong to this language it belongs to more functional language. Even in Go, interestingly enough, they have kind of a solution in, for this particular problem with the returning errors as the first class object rather than exceptions. But that's a different story. And that's what I also heard a little bit. I think I sense the sentiment in the, in the discussions that, okay, it's interesting, but then you're starting to fight with the complexities that are yes. added by this particular thing. So... Yeah, yeah, and and to be honest, you, you're changing the the context of your application of so of what someone needs to know uh, before they can understand your code base from Kotlin, which is, is a very broad uh, application to Kotlin and Arrow. So you you really raise the bar for new people to understand, uh, and the point that you make that this is also using a fundamentally different paradigm than what the the language has designed in itself. I mean, that means that someone really has to be familiar with that par paradigm. Yeah, so basically this is not a lightweight choice what flavor of Kotlin we're using. This is basically we're using Arrow with Kotlin yes. under the hood. So it should, yes. we are not programming Kotlin anymore, you're programming Arrow. In principle, yes, exactly. Which yeah, yeah. I'm not saying necessarily is completely wrong. Some team might want to to do this to explore, but yes, exactly. So when would you would you use want to do this? I don't think I would use this honestly, because I'm not that attracted to pure functional programming. I like the elements of right. functional programming, and but not uh, like. Uh, the full puristic system and in this sense it's yeah. also i do like to move my exceptional situation especially not exceptional like things like validation and so on there i don't like to have exceptions i do like to move them to the responses and yes, uh, if, often for expected negative uh, feedback i do like to have negative response i like to even return the same either either from uh, arrow of somewhere else but it works nice with one level maybe not in the sense like when you're starting to compose then it starts to be too complicated then i would prefer to uh, switch to simple ifs or exceptions maybe even what i did like in go that in go you can return multiple values from the same function so there is yeah. a natural way to return an error as a last return value from a function that's a convention so you have these first class return errors. You have also still under the hood, the uh, fatal errors exception like, which is probably more or less, yeah, 
they will always be around. And, but but that's also kind of the way I, I usually approach uh, exception ha- handling uh, in Kotlin. Like if this is a um, an exceptional case that's part of our domain logic and said, then indeed I, I want to cover this in my type signature, in my in my type system. Um, and uh, but like uh, really uh, programming errors, exceptional cases, I think it, it's fine to throw up um, exceptions. And okay, maybe we're focusing too much on the error exceptional handling, although that right. was uh, quite a dominant uh, topic of the dev, uh, dev day. But I'm curious if you're doing, if you're returning in signatures, uh, constantly often expected errors, how will it work indeed with the multiple levels when you want to have a slightly different uh, response? So let's say you have a chain of calls and somewhere here at the bottom mm-hmm. you can return different, well, you return okay value maybe and some error, maybe sealed classes or exceptions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it correct the first step, how it will work for you? Yeah, so what, what I, I usually do is that um, I do not make it a, a deep call chain. I, I try to separate the logic that validates the exception to a separate new chain so that you have like, like a top level that first does your validation and that uh, calls back an error handling. And then once all those exceptional cases have been checked, then I go into the normal uh, chain, which then again doesn't have to deal with this exceptional uh, cases anymore. Okay. I, I guess... We have to stop about error now, otherwise yeah, we yeah, a dedicated, yeah, yeah. A dedicated <laughs> rant no, I, or yeah. exploration episode. No, I think like there's a, there's a conclusion here that these exceptional cases should be part of the way you design your code. Um, and uh, how then exactly? It doesn't really matter as long as you make it uh, explicit. And I don't feel that I need um, Arrow to do that in Kotlin. Okay, but someone might need, and then they will be using just, uh, yeah, be warned, it's uh, it's quite invasive, and you will need to write in error. Yes, exactly. It's, I guess, similar decision choice as choosing for Hibernate GPA or uh, some reactive libraries. It's not something that... Sh- well, okay, for Hibernate, many people assume, but for me at least, it's not something that is natural natural choice. You might no. make this decision, but it should be a conscious choice. Yes, exactly. Okay, coming back to to our um, to other presentations, what I also liked, what was always nice to see, Pauline, our ex colleague from yeah. Bold.com, we had like yeah. a row of presentations from bolded commerce almost a row <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yes yeah there was some well for, for me it was useful to ge- to get a like high level overview of active um, tools and frameworks that are supposedly actively used by o- by kotlin community and also get some feedback for some of those tools that was that's always yeah. good yeah, but I, I, I felt like her, her um, presentation was lacking a conclusion. Yeah, well, there was a conclusion that the uh, ecosystem is there, there are lots of tools, uh, and there was one piece of actually of the conclusion, I think, which I quite disagree with. That was uh, mm-hmm. that Pauline um, suggested or called us to use Kotlin tools which I am not necessarily think always is the best option. I think the Kotlin tools are good to use when they give you something like Kotlin, but it's also perfectly fine to use just gen- general generic GVM tools when they do work. Yeah, and, and, and it's interesting how that, that message doesn't really uh, fit with uh, her presentation, which was like half of the... Uh, uh, the libraries and and t- t- uh, that she uh, presented were like uh, Java originals uh, and that now support Kotlin, uh, like Spring and Juke and uh, um, I I don't know others, <laughs> but 
Yes, and that brings me a bridge to another topic. Uh, it was mentioned a couple of times during the presentations about the experience with Kotlin X. Or is it Kotlin JetBrains Expose framework for data access? Right. Yeah. And what I got again the sentiment, overall sentiment that it's kind of fun in simple cases. It's relatively easy, but when you have non-simple case, then it suddenly becomes very counterintuitive for the users, at yeah. least those that were expressing this. And and I think that that goes for pretty much most Kotlin uh, native libraries that do not do uh, something trivial. Like I think uh, Kotlin logging works quite well, but mostly because it just wraps around uh, um, the existing uh, SLF4J uh, uh, logging and um, or log4j actually. I don't know. Depends on which one you're using. Uh, Something. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's as a fact of the way. So I don't I know. Get my lines somewhere. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, most of these Scotland native libraries just don't seem to have the maturity yet that is necessary if you want to do like a, a full enterprise integration. Uh, I was speaking to someone in. He was saying, yeah, I, I really like Kator, but when I'm using uh, Kator, I need to set up so much that uh, Spring gives me for free that it's like, yeah, why am I using Kator then? And then I, I think like the most uh, relevant use case that I've heard of, and I think you told me first of it, but I've, I've since seen it at, at other teams as well, is that you use uh, Kator for your uh, fakes in your, in your tests while you just use Spring for your main application. Yes, and even there, I'm not completely happy. That's why I was okay. uh, looking for yeah, other was, options that was Pauline actually, was given. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually expecting this solution in your uh, uh, sugar for test presentation. Uh, but, uh, yeah, well, this is would be for broader presentation, maybe, and that's and that's already goes into a little bit outside of the specifically Kotlin because yes, it's nice to use Skater. But when you're going into fakes, it's not about cater itself. But my, my, well, maybe actually you have a point. If I if I ever get a bigger slot, maybe I could use this cater. But I was slightly <laughs> recently unhappy with cater. One of the reasons it okay, I'm using not the early access, not the preview. I'm using stable versions. They're not that fast to start up for fakes. It's a couple of seconds. Ah, right. Oh, so yeah. So that's um, then nice. I that so means I have you to can start only to have. I'm using evil singletons because in my technique, I'm fine with uh, reusing, well, not reusing, but generating unique data for every test run, even if it's for unit tests, so they don't collide with each other. So that's not a big deal, but uh, to use singletons, but it's slightly inconvenient. The biggest inconvenience was that it was not possible to start uh, cater on a random port. So you had to oh. provide a port. Right. which is a little <laughs> so bit the, yeah. of a nuance. Well, it's also not a big deal, except for between the moment that you're generating the random, that port and between your starting cater, someone else can uh, come in and say and claim that port. And that I did have some issues. So I'm looking forward to switch to the latest cater or some other uh, web framework for these purposes. Because the latest Skater yeah. 2.0, it does support, but it's still uh, EAP and it needs latest uh, Kotlin, which we don't use that. So in any case, yes, I agree on this sentiment that they are not always fully production ready. Although, and I heard these stories like for Kotest, for example, teams going to Kotest at the beginning of our journey at Bold.com with Kotlin especially, so it's about three years ago, and then switching back to JUnit because it was just not giving much, more giving headaches. I'm not sure what is the status of Kotes uh, now. What I can say is that the mock is relatively okay, I think. I'm using mock now. Yeah, the, the mock K. Uh, yeah, yeah, mock K. It's okay. It, yeah. it does miss some things, well, not really miss with the dynamic mock generation dynamic responses sometimes i hit rough edges but on the other hand again in my current philosophy for those cases i would prefer fake so i'm fine with that <laughs> exactly exactly um yeah so um, maybe uh, let's uh, wrap it up uh, 
biggest conclusion of uh, Kotlin Dev Day? The biggest conclusion of uh, Kotlin Dev Day. It's great to be back to the offline conferences. It's a little bit sad that they will not be now flourishing again because of the situation now. But oh my uh, God. it's good. It was good to have this uh, small, uh, like a breath of fresh air of the human yeah. interaction, and what that's what we'll be looking for and waiting. Yeah, I, I, I was. Uh... I, I wholeheartedly agree. I, I thought it was uh, really well organized uh, and it was a lot of fun to do. And I thought the audience was really good. I uh, I don't know because they, they, I think they selected down a couple times and they ended up with like just awesome people uh, with great conversations. And, yes, uh, it was a uh, very it was supportive. Energy. It was a very supportive audience. I think it was very nice yeah, exactly. to interact. Even though exactly. it was indeed not that many people restrictions well organized i fully agree very big thanks to xibi and organizers and i got my stack yeah. also good yeah excellent <laughs> mine's in the laundry otherwise i would have worn it as well oh. <laughs> and um good. Uh, okay also it, it it also gave me like um more energy for kotlin again so that was fun because i was really yes. leaning towards yes. uh, let let's go to to java again but this was like ah oh, yeah yeah it's actually pretty cool yeah there, <laughs> there are some points and one of the main uh, concerns of yours was addressed in this loom versus coroutine exactly, potentially exactly there was there was particularly one of the things like yeah uh, maybe too much divergence but uh, we've pulled me back man <laughs> good all right. Okay. So uh, on that note, um, if you like this talk and uh, any of our other talks, please like and uh, uh, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment if you think uh, there's anything uh, interesting um, from uh, uh, the Kotlin Dev Day. We'll link to hopefully a playlist. We'll link to all the individual. Uh, we talks, will link. Uh, we will link the that, playlist uh, we and mentioned. we will link everything. Yes. Yes. And um, if you want, check out our talks because they were amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am 